YouTubers, so today I want to do a little bit of whiteboard session about the project, or rather, series projects I've got coming up. So I've decided to uh, invest in a Bridgeport mill and a lathe in order to do some metalworking projects related to the bus and some other stuff, and hey, maybe I'll make a buck at the same time. Um, so I bought a Monarch 14C. 30 inch between centers lathe. Now, for those of you who are into metalworking, you know this is a big honking lathe. This is built in May of 1941, so it's old. It's big, it's heavy, and um, it's old. So, I gotta move this thing. And to give you kind of a ballpark idea, you know. A lathe is basically a platform on a couple of legs, in this case made out of cast iron, and it has a little spinny piece here called a headstock, and another piece here called a tailstock, and a piece that moves back and forth called a saddle that holds the tools. And basically, you can think of this as being really heavy. And what he wants to do is flip over. Well, that's not a good thing. So how do you keep it from flipping over? You know, and if you were to look at the end of this, it would look something like this, with a whole bunch of weight up there. Well, the way you move one of these is you build a pallet. And you set it on the pallet, and maybe you slant these like this, and you extend the pallet out to the sides, so you get a pallet jack underneath between the skids, and this is, and then you maybe you bolt the machine down, and this is a safe way to move a lathe. This is how they ship them from the factory. This is how you should sh should move them. So the question is, how do you pick up a 4,000 pound lathe? So you can put it on this pallet that you're going to build out of $70 worth of lumber. Oh. Well, you know, even if I had five or six friends who are really strong, I don't think they'd want to come over, not even for beer and pizza, to pick up a 4,000 pound object. It ain't happening. So, the right way to do this is to put a sling right here, because one of the things about lathes is they all pretty much will balance where the chuck is. And you move that and that in or out to help balance it. So you can pick every lathe up from the chuck. Not by the chuck, but from this. This actually is a big cast iron beam. Because the more rigid it is, the more accurate it is. And Monarchs are some of the most rigid and most accurate tools that have ever been made. They're really, really good lathes, and I'm very excited about this. Even though I'm going to have a lot of, oh my god, what the heck did I do moments when I'm trying to move it. So, I'm going to do a video about putting it on a pallet, but that only solves one of my problems. So my other problem is how do I get it on the pallet? Well, one of the things you can do if you have a machine sitting on the ground is you can use pinch bars. And a pinch bar is just a pry bar and you, you know, you, you lever this this way and then you shove a block of wood on it and you go around and you basically do it the Egyptian method. You pick the thing up. Well, one of the things you can do once you have it picked up is you can put little bars of steel underneath of it and now it'll roll on bars. Kind of like a big block. It's kind of how we think the Egyptians made the pyramids. Yeah, you know, that's the hard way and there'll probably be a little bit of that involved. You can also put the pins underneath your pallet and now 
it'll act as a bearing and you can move it. But it still doesn't answer the question, how do you get a 4,000 pound object off the ground in order to build a pallet under it? It's not like this thing has a levitate button. Well, remember, we're still going to want to pick it up with a sling from right about where the chuck is. So, you know, one of the options is you have a big overhead crane and you come down here and you pick it up with a hook. That's how the factory does it. Unfortunately, there's not a crane where this lathe is at. So one of the other options you have... So, how do you get... You know, we don't have a crane where we're going. So one of the other things you could do is bring in a forklift. I don't know. You know what? I can't really draw. So we'll just say that's a guy on a forklift. The problem is forklift rental is kind of expensive and I don't have a forklift where it's at and I don't really want to rent a forklift to get it here. And there isn't really room to run a forklift where this thing is at. So, and I'm not really sure the floor that it's on would support a forklift. So unfortunately, while that's a great option, yeah, I don't think it's going to work. And basically you put the fork through the sling and still use the sling to pick it up. Don't ever pick it up with forks under here because that's just not, that's not the right way to do it. Every quality lathe manufacturer will tell you how to pick up their product and you need to listen. So, short of the Egyptian method, the other thing you could do is build a crane. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to build a small gantry crane. I looked at buying one, but $1,100 only gets me something that might be rated for 2,000 pounds. And this lathe weighs between 4,000 and 4,500 pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I'm building a crane with a capacity of 5,000 pounds. And it's going to roll in, pick this thing up, slide a pallet under it, and I'm going to set it down. It'll go back in the rental truck. When I get to this end, I can use it to pick the whole assembly up to put pins under it. And when I'm ready to, I can use it to pick it up to get the pallet out. So let's talk a little bit about what I'm about to build. But before I do, cranes are dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. If you don't know how to weld, don't do it. If you aren't 110% sure of your calculations, don't do it. Don't build a crane if you don't know what you're doing, because it might kill you if it collapses. So I'm confident in my calculations, and I'm confident in my ability to weld, so I'm willing to build a crane. I still aren't, I'm not going to trust it. I never go underneath a load that's supported by a sling. So basically what the plan is, and I'm going to draw this in two elevations. So basically the plan is this is a telescoping gantry crane and it's going to have a 4 inch three by 3 sixteenths um, tube steel on wheels so it can be moved okay and then there are there's a piece of three and a half inch tubing and a piece of three inch tubing which fit together as a sleeve, and on top of that is an I-beam. Alright, and the purpose of the I-beam is the I-beam goes across here, and that's actually the sport. It has a 80 inch span, and that gives me 
clearance for a five foot pallet with a little bit of change to spare. The wheels are not rated and this beam is not rated to support this load. So I'm going to wind up fabricating a block to stick under there when I go to lift it. That way when it flexes down a little bit it'll stop on the block and that'll be the end of that. This is just simply a shop belt crane specifically for this purpose. And there's a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, you could use a trolley on the beam and a chain hoist. I don't know, it might get converted to that later. I just didn't want to do that right now because this needs to be able to go into my garage and I have height issues if I start trying to make it high enough to use with a chain hoist. Um, and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the entire frame with hydraulic cylinders. So the hydraulic cylinders were $30 a piece at Harbor Freight. They're basically self-contained rams. They have a flat bottom. And um, I'm just going to build a little jack, a jack pad here. And the most critical part of this is your beam selection. And the way you get around this is there's some calculators on the web and you need to pick one that you trust. And you say, okay, I've got to span this way. It's, it's you know, this is how it's, it's connected at the ends, and this is where the load is going to be. Is this beam going to flex? We should get 0.21 inches of flex on this beam. Um, and I designed this for a 6x9 beam, which is a, a 6 inch web, 9 pounds per foot. Turns out my supplier metal supermarket only had 6x12, so it's a heavier beam than I had designed for. That's a good thing in, in building this kind of device. Um, I was able to use some scrap sections um, for this. And when I say scrap, it's just cutoffs that are surplus for them. It's not actually like, you know, it's been dug out of the trash. And so this stuff is a little bit heavier and a little bit taller than I expected. Um, so I'll adjust the design as I fabricate. So, but this is the general vicinity, um, and I've looked at a lot of other people's stuff, and there's just really not anything out there on, on how to build a shop crane. So, now that you understand what I'm up to and why I'm doing it, I'm going to stop and I'm going to cut to um, fabrication videos. So, one of the things that's going to be in here is um, there's going to be some footage of building of pre-cutting the pallet so I've cut all the the boards that are five feet long that'll go on this pallet and I've cut the the four by fours that are going to go under it for support uh, I got that pre-cut so I don't have to do that on site um, but, so that's one story but then the fabrication and welding and, and testing of this is a whole second animal so I'm gonna make a video about the crane specifically because I think that's something a lot of people are going to be interested in and then I'm going to make, this is just going to be part of moving the, um, the, the lathe. And really that's going to divide into a pre, a palletizing, a moving, unloading. I don't know, I'm going to figure out how to divide these videos up. So this is probably the chattiest of the videos. I'm, I'm trying to balance, I know a lot of you want to know what I'm doing and why and what the thought process is. And then others of you just want to cut to the chase and see what happens. So I'm trying to balance those two needs, and I'm going to split some of this footage up. But I hope this explanation helped. As always, please take the time to like my videos if you've enjoyed this or gotten something from it. Please take the time to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. And as always, leave your comments, thoughts, and questions, and I'll respond to them. Um, all the comments are moderated, so please keep it uh, appropriate. And... Um, We'll see you. I'm going to shut the camera off and switch gears and start fabricating.